Hi folks, welcome to Bear Mountain today. We are gonna be doing two things. Uh, first, we're, we're in the process of making an indigenous microorganism collection using cooked rice. But there's a side of benefit when you do this is one of the things in making the rice is you wash it. We can use that rice wash water and some milk to make LAB. So that's the purpose of this video is we're gonna show you how we make the LAB. So stay tuned, because this is how we do it. Okay, LAB is lactoacid bacteria or lactobacillus bacteria. And it's really lactobacillus, I guess that's the correct term. But basically the uses of it are pretty varied in Korean natural farming, but can outside of that, you can use it for a lot of different things. We use it um, as a soil treatment to help with uh, pathogens in the soil. Uh, it helps actually loosen up the soil. A lactobacillus is what's called a facultative anaerobe, meaning it can operate in both aerobic and anaerobic. In the aerobic cycle, it will use oxygen and behave like most other bacteria and make their energy in a normal cycle of, I hate to go back to biology, but I'm thinking it's something like the Krebs cycle. And, but when deprived of oxygen in an anaerobic state, it will continue to function and will thrive uh, using fermentation. So what we're gonna be doing when we wash this rice is what washes off the surface of rice when you, before you cook it are actually, well, carbohydrates, simple sugars, things of that nature. Well, we can use that water basically as a trap for lactobacillus that may be floating around in the atmosphere on micrometer size dust particles that you can't see or smell or anything like that, but they're there. So what we're gonna do is use that rice water to capture lactobacillus and then culture it in milk because lactobacillus really thrives on lactose, the sugars that are in milk. So we can use that chemistry basically to create a serum of concentrated lactobacillus that we can then use for our various different purposes. So the first thing we're gonna do is wash the rice. Very simple thing. When we make an IMO collection, uh, we typically make it at about four cups of cooked rice. So the first uh, rinsing is what we'll use for our LAB is four cups of water. So it's really easy. We just buy cheap rice from Costco, 25 pound bag of it and uh, Measure out four cups. It's not a super exact science. This is as close as we can get to four cups as we can here. Three, and I can count. Fourth one. Now, I kind of cheat about the rice wash water. I basically look at my, my pot, my rice that's in it, and I'll fill the water, cold water, up to just so the rice is just barely covered. So we'll just do that real quick. Okay, we got the material, the rice and the water in here, and we just kind of swish it around with the hands. There it is, and it's not Really too difficult. Callie the flower dog says it's okay. And you can see that the, the actual rice water itself is getting kind of a milky color to it. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that milky color.
and we just stir it for a few minutes till you know it, it feels like we washed it now we'll wash the rice a couple more times because we like to triple wash the rice before we actually cook it for the IMO collection because what we're trying to do is get as much of that carbohydrate off so that the rice isn't sticky when we cook it okay so once we have that rinsed what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put it into a jar and uh, it's not it doesn't have to be exact you know so many cups or anything it's just whatever the amount of rice water is that we got the rinse water we got out of this thing we'll fill it into here and this will be what we'll use to capture the lab lactobacillus so let's do that all right when we're straining this out we don't want any rice grains actually getting this we just want pure water so we're just going to use a quick little strainer and drain the water into the container. All right, so we got most of it in there. Now, what you see here, this is the rice rinse water. You can see it's really cloudy. What we're going for with this is the inside water here. And this is what's going to be capturing the LAB and allowing us to make the culture that we'll inoculate the milk with. So the last step here is real simple. We're just going to put a paper towel over the top I like to double mine. These are like half sheets. So we'll just put this over the top and then we'll put a rubber band around it. And the rubber band goes around the top just to seal it. Now the whole idea of this is the actual bacteria can get through the pores of this paper towel surprisingly. And also too, there is probably lactobacillus actually on the rice itself. So some of it may already be inoculated into the water. But what it's going to be doing is growing on the sugars in here from the grain, and that's what we're trying to culture. Right now, there's no odor to it at all. It doesn't smell like anything. Okay, in about three days, what will happen is the, the actual cloudiness of the water will settle. Sediments that are in this will settle to the bottom. There'll be a slight film on the top and it'll have kind of an interesting smell. It's kind of a sweet and sour smell, but a little more on the sweet side. And in some cases, it, you can say, well, it kind of smells like a form of bread. Well, because this is a grain-based, you know, liquid that it's growing in, I think it kind of liberates some of those, those kind of flavors in, as a smell. That's when you know it's ready. And at room temperature, being that we're in the Pacific Northwest, room temperature for us is about 68 to 70 degrees. Um, it takes about three days. And then we move on to the next step after that, which is actually inoculating the um, milk liquid. So let's just label this. This is one of the things we do is we put a label on this. It's a great idea to do it so you know what time you did it and what day you did it. Now, most people can know, yeah, I know I did that on Thursday, but it's always kind of interesting for me just to kind of keep track of, you know, does it take longer than three days? Sometimes it can. You know, if your house is running real cool or maybe you're storing this stuff like in the garage or something like that and your garage is getting real cool at night and, you know, you kind of don't want it in an area where you're going to have fluctuating temperatures. You want to stay as stable as possible. Well, let's just say for argument's sake, Instead of 68 to 70 degrees, you were keeping it maybe more like 55 to 60. Well, that's only going to slow the process down. It may take five days to get to that point. So don't panic if it doesn't you know, work out exactly right in three days because it's very dependent on temperature and humidity conditions and that will make a big difference. If it starts to smell bad, you know, like it went way sour, don't use it because it's probably not right. 
it, you know, for whatever happened, some other anaerobes got in there or some other types of pathogenic bacteria got in there and the lactobacillus probably didn't, didn't dominate for whatever reason. It could happen. So if it does happen, don't inoculate your milk. I would discard that and start again with a fresh collection. You know, trying to keep it as clean as possible. Um, that's really the key to this thing. If you use a undeveloped inoculant or you use inoculant that for whatever reason went bad, you're going to get a bad result with the milk. That's just, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So anyway, we're going to label this, set it aside in our pantry, which is you know, off the kitchen and it's kind of dark in there most of the time. So there's no light. That's the other thing is you don't want to put this in a windowsill and let the sunlight hit it. That's not, not what you want to do. You will get bad results by that. You want to keep it stable temperatures as close to, you know, room temperature as you can. So anyway, you want to keep it out of direct light and keep it in, um, you know, a stable temperature area for that three to five days. So we'll label it and set it aside. And that's all we need to do for phase one.